A fire broke out at a factory in Melbourne Southeast on December 7, 2023. The factory stores computer printing chemicals. The fire, which began around lunchtime, burned for approximately nine hours before being contained. Two firefighters sustained minor injuries during the incident, and two factory workers were transported to the hospital for evaluation. Smart driving means stopping at red lights. See how it keeps everyone safe in this footage. Dashcam footage released by St. PPD in June 2012, originally captured in May, shows a close call at a nighttime intersection. A vehicle approaching the intersection disregards a red light and narrowly avoids colliding with a taxi legally proceeding through the green light. This incident serves as a stark reminder that obeying traffic signals is crucial for everyone's safety, regardless of the time of day or perceived emptiness of the road. Every driver has a responsibility to follow the rules and be aware of their surroundings to prevent accidents and protect themselves and others. An unexpected encounter awaits a tourist at Kruger National Park. Lions seeking respite from the sun use the car's shade as a temporary haven. While a playful tussle for the prime spot unfolds between the male and female, the tourists understandably feel a rush of adrenaline. Thankfully, the situation resolves peacefully as both lines eventually find comfort under the shade. Though hearts raced, everyone involved emerged unscathed from this unique wildlife encounter. Driving on dark roads requires being extra cautious and aware of your surroundings. These two individuals faced a life-threatening situation when they crossed paths with two menacing figures disguised as clowns. The individuals were taken aback by the appearance of clowns on the road, who then attempted to smash their car windows. The group narrowly avoided harm by swiftly accelerating and fleeing from the scene as rapidly as possible. It is unclear what might have happened if the driver had not reacted quickly. YouTube adventurer John, known for his Lost Lakes channel showcasing backcountry camping, uploaded a video in 2018. Captured at around 3.30 a.m. at a remote location west of Chaplow, Ontario, the video depicts his solo camping experience. Well, I am living every solo camper's nightmare right now. Um, there appears to be an animal of some kind pacing around my tent. It's the middle of the night. And then around 3.30, it, uh, I started to hear this pacing sound. And 45 minutes later, it's still just pacing around out there. The setting raises safety considerations. With a limited cell reception and being in Ontario's Black Bear Territory, encountering wildlife is a possibility. While bear attacks on campers are uncommon, it's crucial to acknowledge potential risk posed by animals like bears, moose, or wildcats, especially when feeling threatened. John showcases precautions he took, including a hatchet, bear spray, and an air horn, while emphasizing the importance of responsible wildlife interaction. He acknowledges the vulnerability of tents against large animals. However, the text refrains from speculating on the source of footsteps, avoiding sensationalism and potential misinformation. Interestingly, despite forgetting his key and having the car nearby, John reports a safe night's sleep, leaving the source of the nighttime sounds a mystery. Solo camping can expose people to various potential dangers, including encounters with both humans and wildlife. YouTuber Sean, known for his Love Sundays channel showcasing solo camping adventures in the UK, uploaded a video in September 2022 highlighting an experience not recommended for responsible campers. The video depicts Sean camping overnight on the roadside in Cornwall, an area with established parking regulations. While acknowledging the location's unsuitability for camping, the focus shifts to Sean's attempt to minimize visibility to avoid attention. This raises concerns about responsible campsite selection and adhering to local regulations. Later, the narrative describes an unsettling experience Sean encountered at 2 a.m., leaving viewers without details.
Solo camping, especially in unauthorized locations, can present unforeseen challenges. Although encounters with individuals requesting relocation are not uncommon, their approach typically involves knocking and verbal communication. Approaching a vehicle silently and attempting entry without identification raises safety concerns. This incident, while potentially unsettling, underscores the importance of responsible camping practices. Choosing designated campsites, adhering to local regulations, and prioritizing safety are crucial for both personal and environmental well-being. While the specific details of the encounter remain unclear, responsible camping practices minimize risk and ensure a more enjoyable and respectful outdoor experience. Intriguing dolls with seemingly moving eyes have sparked curiosity on Reddit. Shared by user Song Koila, the image raises questions about the doll's design and potential optical effects. Many commenters offer explanations, while others find the dolls unsettling. Whether it's a clever design or simply an illusion, the doll's unique features captivate viewers. While some may find them eerie, Others appreciate the artistic expression and intricate details. Tension and unpredictable behavior can arise in high-pressure situations like sporting events. This incident, occurring just a month before 2014 World Cup in Rio de Janeiro, exemplified such a scenario. Four-hour standoff today in Rio de Janeiro, where an armed man hijacked a bus taking 37 people hostage. In a bustling area, a man attempted to rob passengers on a bus, but the situation escalated quickly. Police intervened, leading to a tense standoff where the man held 37 people hostage for several hours. Reports indicate the man made no specific demands, creating further uncertainty. While the footage doesn't show the interior, it captures the surrounding chaos as people reacted to the unfolding crisis. The situation became even more volatile when the man threatened to set the bus ablaze with nearly 40 people inside. Passengers who were released said he poured petrol out and threatened to set the bus alight. After exhausting attempts to negotiate, officers employed a police sniper to subdue the man. The situation on board a bus in Brazil has ended with the alleged assailant shot dead by a police sniper. Thankfully, no hostages were harmed but the ordeal undoubtedly caused significant distress for those involved in watching the live coverage. Experiencing someone recklessly merging onto a road and cutting you off is undeniably one of the most frustrating situations for any driver. What's more, those who commit such actions often escape consequences. However, this individual won't get away with it. He's on the verge of facing the justice he deserves. Granted, the street is narrow, but the Prius driver could have patiently waited for an opportunity to leave the parking spot. Adding insult to injury, he goes on to give the driver behind him the middle finger. However, in his arrogance, he overlooks the road ahead. After his fleeting triumph, the naive driver swiftly rear-ends another vehicle. Upon getting out of his car, he faces what could be the most humiliating event of his whole existence rather than basking in victory. This video serves as a stark reminder of the importance of staying out of restricted areas like airport runways. These areas are strictly off limits to the public due to significant safety risk involved for everyone including pilots, passengers, and individuals on the ground. If you ever encounter a situation where you're unsure about an area's safety, always prioritize your safety and err on the side of caution by staying away. 
A spear fisherman captured footage of a solo deep sea dive using a GoPro camera during a trip with a friend. The video shows him descending quickly without waiting for his companion, potentially violating safe diving practices. Despite his apparent experience, evidenced by calm breathing and relaxed behavior, venturing deep alone increases inherent risks. While white sharks exist in the ocean, and unprovoked attacks on humans are extremely rare, they remain potentially life-threatening encounters. Attributing the incident solely to the lack of a watchful back can create misleading impressions about shark behavior and downplay the inherent dangers of deep-sea diving alone. Following safe practices is crucial for all levels of divers, including staying with a buddy and adhering to recommended depths and procedures. Tensions can arise between neighbors, and sometimes misinterpretations can occur. In October 2022, a nine-year-old girl named Bobby, while walking through her neighborhood, was approached by police after a neighbor called 911. The girl, who was using a homemade solution to kill lanternflies, was reported for suspicious activity. It's a little, a little black woman walking and spraying stuff on the sidewalks and trees. I don't know what the hell she's doing. It scares me, though. Thankfully, body camera footage confirms the police handled the situation appropriately and assured both the child and her mother that she was not in trouble. No, you're not in trouble. How many did you kill? How many trees did you save? They're bad. They're all over them. Yeah. This incident sparked discussions within the community about potential biases and the importance of understanding before reacting. While the neighbor's motivations remained unclear, the incident highlights the need for open communication and neighborly understanding. Aperence Un Chenique delves into the rich tapestry of Mexican folklore and superstition, bringing to life the legendary creature known as the Chenique. Steeped in myth and often associated with the natural world, the Shinike is said to be a mischievous spirit or entity. The video's raw and unpolished footage adds to its authenticity and eerie atmosphere. Viewers are presented with what appears to be a small elusive figure that embodies the characteristics of the mythical Shinike. Its sudden appearance and unpredictable movements contribute to the video's otherworldly feel. Wait, wait. Aperiche un Shinike has garnered a variety of reactions. Some viewers, recognizing the video as homage to the folk tales and legends they grew up with, felt a sense of familiarity and appreciation. Others have questioned the video's authenticity, seeking more logical explanations for the captured footage. It serves as a reminder of the enduring power of folklore and its ability to capture our imaginations. Observing wild animals in their natural habitat can be a fascinating experience. However, it's crucial to prioritize their well-being and safety. Approaching wild animals too closely or interfering with their lives can be stressful and dangerous for both humans and animals. Responsible wildlife observation involves maintaining a safe distance, using binoculars or telephoto lenses for observation, and avoiding any actions that could disturb or harm the animals. By prioritizing responsible behavior and respecting wildlife, we can ensure enjoyable and safe experiences for both humans and animals. This happened in Dover, England, January 2020. Uploaded to and covered by YouTube channel Fact Fiction, a 20-year-old boxer, Zach McCabe, was walking into the gym before experiencing the most frightening moment of a lifetime. Surveillance footage captures McCabe walking past a pizza place when, out of nowhere, a car driving recklessly hits a parked car, causing it to hit McCabe.
McCabe was sent into the building and bonked right off. McCabe stumbled into the pizza place stunned by what just happened. McCabe was lucky to only suffer minor injuries such as blurred vision and a bump on the head. The bag on his shoulder played as a cushion helping McCabe out. Authorities detained a 17-year-old boy of suspicion of theft, dangerous driving, and driving without insurance. McCabe stated and quoted, I looked straight up and there was a car in the air. It happened so quickly. How am I here today? I don't know. I should have died. Someone was looking over me. McCabe was indeed very lucky. This video captures the experience of passengers who became trapped in an elevator. After enjoying the initial camaraderie, rising temperatures and the extended time frame caused concerns to escalate, especially for a young girl separated from her mother. Thankfully, firefighters promptly responded to the situation. By skillfully creating an access point within the elevator, they enabled everyone to safely climb to the top and exit. Individuals seeking guidance naturally gravitate towards those who appear capable and knowledgeable. Keith Rainier, with his captivating presence and persuasive words, embodied this image. In 1998, amidst allegations of a previous scheme, he co-founded NXIVM with Nancy Salzman, offering personal development seminars fueled by a controversial belief in harnessing hate as a power source. His rhetoric often resembled an endless stream of self-help buzzwords, strategically avoiding concrete content while maintaining a hypnotic influence. Participants in these seminars seeking personal growth and direction might easily overlook the crucial principle of discerning genuine intentions from manipulative facades. Tell us about your ideas for uh, this education for a new earth. Oh, that's interesting. Um children need to become adults that is in our bodies they're mature we can breed we can go out and produce we can sustain ourselves but then there's another stage of upbringing of education that must happen taking adults to become humanitarian adults ecological adults adults that can understand the nature of being on a planet being in an environment with many many people and many many different types and the basic practices of how to do that Rainier cultivated an aura of exceptionalism 
positioning himself as an object of veneration and unquestionable leadership. This fostered an environment ripe for manipulation and exploitation, where financial contributions and tolerance for abuses stem from the belief in being chosen and receiving special treatment. Every aspect of Rainier's image was meticulously crafted, from staged interviews to strategically written pieces designed to project intelligence and worthiness of allegiance. So for me, it's like the most important thing for an artist to understand how to do is tap into authenticity and then share mm -hmm. with the world that experience mm -hmm. so that other people can feel that too. You know, it's, it's interesting. Our, our senses, as we improve them, we sense authenticity and creativity on subtler and subtler levels. You now, one may, might say if you believe that there's a, an essential creativity that's within the fabric of the universe or a type of micro uncertainty, it, when you get very proficient at something, you start to make distinctions that bring an individual's nature into whatever they do. He actively recruited, leveraging celebrities like Allison Mack to lure more individuals into his organization, regardless of the potential consequences they might face under his control. I came to ESP, I had on the surface something that seemed to be like the perfect life or a pretty good life. Like superficially, materialistically, I was very successful. His ultimate fate, a 120 year prison sentence and substantial fines, stands as a stark reminder of the devastating impact manipulative leaders can have. Rainier's manipulative tactics involved promising shortcuts to happiness and fulfillment, strategically inserting himself into victims' lives, showering them with affection, love bombing, and cultivating a dependent connection. By making them feel valued and special, he bent them to his will. Let's go in the car. We can, we're gonna follow them. Get out of the way. Huh? Lauren's coming. Lauren. Let's go, you guys. NXIVM, operating for decades under his influence, amassed a peak membership of 700, including wealthy and influential individuals. Experts in cults and mental health have labeled him a cult leader, wielding coercive control and manipulating followers to prioritize his authority above any reason or external authority. Over 100 victim impact statements detail the horrors inflicted by Rainier, including exploiting minors, sex trafficking, financial fraud, and forced labor. Even worse than the pain was finding out what was really, what the brand really was. What was the brand? Well, ultimately we found out that the brand was Keith Rainier's initials, but um, for a very long time we were told that it was a symbol of the elements and that was another major lie that was told from the top down. Women within the organization were manipulated into unthinkable acts from branding to compromising photos, all under the guise of self-improvement or, as some members reported, a twisted version of feminism. If we took these photos, if we pushed back on fears that we had or vulnerabilities that we felt, that we would have some kind of freedom on the other, <laughs> on the other end. Like, we would be then magically without insecurity or something. And and I wanted to believe that because I wanted to believe that what I was doing was good for me because I had been there for years and mm -hmm. I had been conditioned to think that way. And it's hard. It's hard to look at your life and question your decisions because you have to see the things that you've done that are that are painful and not good. Rainier's charismatic allure and calculated manipulation ensnared individuals who yearned for a sense of belonging and significance. This desire, coupled with overlooking the importance of critical thinking and discerning true intentions, left these individuals vulnerable to his exploitation. At times, the chaos originates from within. A subway employee appears to be reaching a breaking point while liberating a co-worker. Threats are exchanged, with him vowing to damage her phone, and she counters by offering to pay him for it. I won't ruin your phone. No, you're not gonna you gonna then you're gonna pay for no, my phone. Won't. You're gonna pay for my phone. Shut the recording. You're, the, you're gonna pay for my phone. It becomes apparent that he holds some authority, instructing her to clock out. Adding an unsettling layer to the situation, he threatens legal action for being recorded, 
while she asserts she's recording for her own protection. The root cause of this frustration is revealed when he expresses displeasure about her spending extended time in the bathroom due to pregnancy-related difficulties. Despite her clocking out, he continues to berate her. You spend more time in the goddamn bathroom. If your pregnancy is such a disability that you can't work, you don't need to be working. Calling the manager to explain the situation. Strangely, she persists in following him, maintaining the verbal confrontation. She don't want to do her work. She spent every 15 minutes in the bathroom. And then That's because I'm, I'm pregnant, Lester. A pregnancy is not an excuse. I'm pregnant, so of course I'm going to go back and forth to the bathroom. I'm sorry, Nicole. I quit. While he was clearly wrong for yelling, her decision to linger and provoke him raises questions. What really went down, because I'm not about to lose my job over you. But I'm not, because I didn't do anything to you. Yeah, you just did work. Actually, I did do work. No, Whose fault do you think it is? Or could both parties share the blame in some way? Daniel Hernandez, famously known as Takashi69, found himself in the custody of Palm Beach County deputies after failing to appear in court for a speeding violation in Florida. He was caught driving at a staggering speed of 135 miles per hour in a 65 mile per hour zone, leading to the issuance of an active arrest warrant due to his absence from the court hearing. The deputies initially pulled over an SUV lacking license plates for a traffic violation, but upon running the provided information, they uncovered more than just a routine traffic infraction. License plate. Registration. Okay. Insurance. But take this license plate. Just give me the registration insurance. Okay. Vehicle registration. Another insurance should be here. Do you have? Do you have your license on you? I know. I, I said no like three oh. times. Witness the moment the deputy requests Takashi to exit the vehicle, promptly placing him in handcuffs. Step out of the car for me, As the cuffs are secured, the deputies elucidate the grounds for his arrest. One for what? I'm not the Spread your legs for me. Got a traffic warrant. So you taking me to jail for a traffic warrant? Yes, yeah, sir. You appear, bro. You didn't show up before. I, I didn't know that. Went for what, though? Hey, you have, I guess you received a ticket or something that you didn't take. I never received a ticket. Step forward. Watch as large sums of cash are extracted from his pockets. You want to give it to me? Yeah, to, to. Yo, give that to Yaelin. Just, just take it back home. Okay. Yo, tell my brother, wh where am I going? Takashi might find it hard to believe he was arrested for such a trivial offense. During the ride to the station, he engages in an intriguing conversation with the officers about the ordeal. Regrettably, these individuals found themselves face to face with these formidable adversaries during their journey in the snowy mountains. Witness their trembling stance as they encounter the bison who scrutinize them with equal intensity. One of them instigates panic amongst the group prompting one bison to move to the opposite side while the other two engage in confrontation. The advice is typically to use the snowball bill as a barrier between you and the bison. However, what should be done when the bison are positioned on both sides of the snowmobile? The animals continue to approach persistently, leaving these individuals with no choice but to remain still and observe them passing by, hoping none of the bison become agitated with their presence. A band of cult followers has taken control of the Shushmore Forest. The YouTube crew known as Witch Hunter is on the scene for an investigation. They come across an eerie author reminiscent of a horror movie. Смотри, черепа, блядь, не дери слева, справа, блядь, какие-то знаки нахуй. А вот тарь как будто какой-то, блядь. Это херня. Чел, 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 чел. А я знаю этот знак. Subsequently, they encounter an unusual arrangement and an equally peculiar candle. Вдруг это мертвым принадлежало вот это. Клаврат. Смотри. 
Веведение веры. Какой-то кубок, слышь. The team stumbles upon a stone that suggests a possible site for a sacrificial ritual. И тоже перья, видишь? Да, да, все в крови. Слушай, блядь, она свежая, она прям, смотри, даже не засохла еще. They establish a camp for an overnight stay, and when Dennis emerges from his tent during the night, he witnesses an unusual sight. Upon closer inspection, it appears that the cultists are gathering in the forest. <laughs> Zooming in, he spots a man garbed in a black robe. Dennis wakes up Timothy, and together they venture closer to investigate. As they approach the ritual site, they uncover evidence of a life being sacrificed, accompanied by a burning fire. Deciding it's time to depart, they take their leave. Once they depart, they come to the realization that their timing was impeccable. This video documents two individuals exploring an abandoned boat factory. As they investigate, they encounter unusual sounds, including banging noises apparently coming from above. I know, it smells like something. Holy shit. Get out from around the edge of that. What the fuck? It's getting closer. It is getting closer. Based on these sounds, they speculate about the potential presence of others in the building. Something hidden there. Can you spot it? I know. There's got to be somebody in here with us. Following their initial encounter with an unusual sound, the individuals report experiencing additional noises that seem closer in proximity. Oh my God, dude. 
Investigators John and Tim, throughout their video, refrained from assigning any paranormal interpretations to the event. Instead, they speculated that someone might be intentionally imitating sounds and movements to disturb them. A mobile home park in Cyprus was rocked by an explosion on a typical day. Responding officers arrived at the scene to find a fire raging. Despite the danger, they entered a mobile home to rescue a resident attempting to extinguish the flames. The individual was holding onto an unidentified object that subsequently broke. Fortunately, the officers managed to evacuate the resident just before the situation escalated. Season 6 of The Voice saw many talented singers vying for the top spot. Among them, Christina Grimmie captivated audiences and coaches with her stunning vocals. Her remarkable performance propelled her to a third-place finish and further solidified her growing presence in the music scene. On June 10, 2016, Christina shared her passion with fans at the historic Plaza Live Theater in Orlando, Florida, performing alongside the rock band before you exit. This performance tragically marked the end of her promising career. This marks the final video capturing Christina engaging in what brought her immense joy, opening for the band. She radiates happiness, a sense of accomplishment and vitality, completely unaware that this would be her last performance. The show concludes at 10 p.m., leading to a meet and greet with fans for Christina and other performers. A montage showcases some of the photos she took with fans during this interaction. It was during this time, around 10.20 p.m., that 27-year-old Kevin James Lobel approached Christina. Assuming he was a delighted fan, she opened her arms for a hug, only to be met with a shocking turn of events. In a tragic move, Kevin James Lobel shot and killed Christina Grimmy before turning the weapon on himself. Their previously quiet haunted residence experienced weeks of tranquility until the YouTube team, G&D Studios, introduced the Halloween-themed miniature houses from Spooky Town. Once unpacked, paranormal activity in their home intensified. Objects literally leapt out of their hands, raising suspicions about whether it was a mere slip or if something more peculiar was at play. Frustrated, they abandoned their attempts. In another recording, the poltergeist exhibits even more aggressive behavior. A few minutes later, peculiar events unfold, leaving viewers puzzled. The situation appears entirely paranormal. leading to the conclusion that the first step to quelling it is to pack up the Halloween spooky town and set it ablaze. Numerous individuals craft fitness plans and set goals that often go unfulfilled. Perhaps you've even created one yourself, intending to frequent the gym, embark on lengthy evening walks, or engage in morning jogs. However, for Stanislav Richki, this routine jog turned out to be his final act before a meeting of violent demise. In the city of Krasnodar, Russia, the submarine commander follows his familiar route for regular exercise. Notably, a man wearing a hat is observed trailing Stanislav as he enjoys his run. Tragically, moments after witnessing Stanislav running past on the screen, he is fatally shot. His life extinguished on the spot before any assistance can reach him. The perpetrator may have tracked him through the widely used fitness app, Strava, as evident on the screen displaying his usual routes marked with red, depicting his regular routine. A YouTuber by the name of Jay Fresina captures her exploration of the ice caves deep within the Austrian mountains. 
While filming, she picks up on a sudden surge of nervous screams emanating from the tourist group ahead. Shortly thereafter, an unusual figure is observed scaling the walls. Someone climbing up the wall. It's an ice man. It's a ghost. Jesus, what is that? Initially, my assumption was that it might be a frog, but the realization hits that they are in the ice caves where no cold-blooded frog should endure the freezing temperatures. Moreover, it's improbable for a group of people to simultaneously scream at the side of an amphibian. Most disconcerting is the humanoid creature's glowing bluish appearance, seemingly lacking a head. The first-hand experience of witnessing such a scene must have been truly surreal. Every nation confronts distinct challenges, and areas where humans and nature share space frequently witness situations like this one. In a remote Indian village, villagers engaged in a perilous effort to capture a rogue leopard. Unfortunately, the attempt failed, resulting in a terrifying escape of the animal. The panicked leopard, as documented by various mobile phone recordings, charged and attacked individuals seemingly indiscriminately. This disturbing incident represents a growing trend across India, where leopard attacks in 2023 alone led to numerous injuries and even fatalities. Reaching up to 190 pounds, a full-grown leopard poses a significant threat not only to children and women, but also to adult men, underscoring the urgency of addressing this complex human-wildlife conflict. The tranquil lull of a refreshing dip in a lake or pond can quickly vanish when you realize you're not alone. Take this Reddit clip posted by Send a Rest, where a man's carefree treading in a pond takes a chilling turn. Unnoticed by him, a predator lurks beneath the surface, a powerful alligator. As it silently closes the distance, jaws poised to strike. The man's idyllic moment transforms into a desperate fight for survival. With unnerving calmness, he maneuvers away from the approaching behemoth. Seconds tick by, tensions mount, and just as the predator lunges, he reacts with calculated speed, scrambling out of the water. This incident showcases the perils of aggressive driving, where both a scooter rider and a car driver engage in careless maneuvers for dominance. While the scooter rider makes an effort to check their surroundings, the car driver exhibits blatant recklessness. He shoves the scooter out of his lane, narrowly missing a collision. Despite regaining a clear path, his fixated attention on the scooter hinders him from noticing the concrete barrier looming beside the tram tracks. As if fueled by his misplaced anger, he even accelerates, intensifying the inevitable impact. The consequences are stark. A demolished car spewing smoke from its mangled hood, a stark reminder of the dangers of road rage and the importance of responsible driving. A casual bike ride takes a turn for the worse when a flaming truck explodes beside you, sending searing metal flying. The near miss leaves you shaken, grateful for your narrow escape and acutely aware of the potential dangers lurking on the road. Ghosts of Britain dives deep in search of the elusive Kraken. The popular YouTuber sets sail on a mysterious hunt for the legendary sea monster, capturing footage of something stirring in the ocean depths. While the video ignites debate, with some convinced it's a colossal creature and others skeptical, one question burns bright. Could it be the Kraken? Personally, I lean towards a more mundane explanation, like a large stingray, as many suggest. But hey, who am I to deny the allure of the mythical? After all, wouldn't you rather err on the side of caution and avoid angering a legendary beast like the Kraken, just in case? A seemingly intimidating biker gang encounters a force of nature they weren't prepared for, a vast herd of bison. 
These tough individuals aren't met with hostility, but by all inspiring power, the bikers came to a complete stop, captivated by the sheer size and presence of the animals. Humongous bison surround the bikers, some coming within mere inches. Offering an unforgettable and likely unnerving close up encounter. This video captures the perilous reality faced by Marine Rifle Squad in Iraq during an IDF attack. The squad is bombarded with rockets, artillery, and mortars, forced to seek cover and rely on their training and resilience to survive. The constant threat of unseen projectiles and the sound of explosions create a palpable sense of fear and tension. Anyone hurt? Oh, God. Oh, God. It's all right. It'll pass. Lord, help us get out of here, all right? <laughs> everyone, everyone okay so far? Oh, shit. I'm not done yet, Kill. Hey. Oh, yeah, I'm just down here, alright? Please, Lord. Please, Lord, let it pass. I think I'm gonna be okay. Crazy. Oh. Lord, please let it pass. Let's all be okay. Let's all go home safely, Lord. Oh, oh shit! God. Holy shit! Hey, chill, chill. Lord, please let it stop. Please let it stop. Oh, shit. Oh, God, don't let the next one be any closer. Just let him stop, Lord. Holy! Oh. Holy! No way! No way! No way! Are you okay? Lord, please let it pass. Please let it pass. Your head! Your head! Listen to me! Hey, yeah! I'm wrong! I'm wrong! Relax, dude. Someone's gonna think you fucking hurt. Please let it pass, Lord. Let him stop, Lord. Let him stop, Lord. Quit pushing me from underneath the table. This glimpse into the experience of combat underscores the courage and sacrifice of those serving in the line of duty. In March 2020, a traffic hammer in Jonesboro, Arkansas captures a terrifying sight, a powerful tornado forming and touching down within the city. This event, occurring around 5 p.m. on March 28th, brought devastation to the city and surrounding areas like Brooklyn. Emergency services quickly issued warnings urging residents to seek shelter as the tornado ripped through businesses and even impacted the local mall. The video's final moments captured a chilling power flash, highlighting the potential danger from damaged power lines. This devastating storm, formed by the merging of smaller ones, left a trail of destruction spanning five miles from its center. This stark footage serves as a powerful reminder of the destructive force of nature and the importance of preparedness in facing extreme weather events. This video serves as a reminder of the importance of responsible driving and following traffic regulations. The incident involves an individual who was pulled over for speeding and subsequently arrested. It's crucial to remember that speeding can have serious consequences, including fines, license suspension, and even arrest. Hi. You know why I'm stopping you? I mean, no. You know what speed limits are? Because I've been trying to catch up to you since Seminole Boulevard. So when you're on Seminole Boulevard, before you get to the Triangle, then you go off to Madeira Beach, and then you go around, and then you make your right-hand turn here. When I when I go over the bridge you're talking about? Before that. So on Seminole Boulevard and 68th Avenue, you're doing 62 and a 45. And then you continued at a high rate of speed over the bridge to Tom Stewart Causeway, the drawbridge there. I use my cruise control over half the time, and I if, if I, I, like... I don't even understand right now, like, if I was speeding, like, why wouldn't it be, like, if I was speeding all the way over there, which I wasn't, like, how, why wouldn't it be just pulled me over all the way back there? Because I can't drive recklessly 
to I put other people in officer, danger to put up with you. I Can you please have a seat back in your vehicle for me, please? And then may I have your license, insurance, and registration, please? I'll talk to you later. No, I don't even understand. I've literally been home. Okay, then have a seat back in the car so I can handle all of this. Okay, so this officer just... I have a seat in the car, please. I, I'm not... A, can you just look at our... I will, just please. I'm okay. just trying to... I've, given, I've asked you to do that three times now because this is a traffic stop. I'm at my house. I told you to sit in the car. Sit in the car, please. I've asked you multiple I times. I need right now. Sit in the car. I'm not saying another word from you. Put your hands He's behind your back. Me. Put your hands behind your back. Ow! Let go of your phone so it doesn't break. This situation underscores the importance of cooperating with law enforcement and respecting their authority. This video, shared by YouTuber D's Dark Adventures, captures a curious sighting at the edge of a farm. The featured animal has sparked discussion about its identity with some viewers speculating on various possibilities, including a costumed person or an unfamiliar creature. It's important to approach such online content with caution. While identifying animals correctly is important, responsible identification relies on verifiable information and expertise. Jumping to conclusions about unknown creatures can be misleading and hinder proper research. If you're interested in learning more about unfamiliar animals, I suggest seeking information from trustworthy sources like wildlife organization or qualified biologists. This video showcases the importance of safety and responsible exploration when venturing into unknown locations. While details of the specific incident are not mentioned, it serves as a reminder that unexpected encounters can occur and is crucial to prioritize your safety and the safety of others. It's important to approach exploration with a cautious and respectful attitude, being mindful of potential risk and avoiding actions that could escalate situations or put yourself or others in danger. Get out! 
What's he mean? Go down the stairs. Oh, well, he looks like he's hiding somewhere. Downstairs, where? Be careful. careful. No. Alright, put the axe down. We can talk. Put the axe down. Why is he up? Danny, we're getting the next person. We're going to leave yet. Yeah. If you encounter an unexpected situation, it's always best to prioritize safety and seek help from the appropriate authorities. What are you doing? Take your Who the fuck is you? This video serves as a reminder of the serious consequences of theft. The individual's actions resulted in their arrest and potential legal repercussions. Engaging in any criminal activity, regardless of its perceived benefits, ultimately leads to a negative outcome. It's important to remember that everyone makes mistakes, and seeking help for underlying issues that may lead someone down a negative path is always an option. A remarkable tale of resilience unfolds as we recount the ordeal of Cordial Patrick amidst multiple fractures, a shoulder out of joint, and a head wound. He defies odds by not just surviving, but also sharing his harrowing experience with us. Tonight, he reflects on his blessings, finding solace in the inexplicable fact of his survival. Resting in his hospital bed, marked by scrapes and bruises, Cordell Patrick's existence defies explanation. Yeah. It was, it was divine intervention. Dashcam footage captures the moments following his ejection from his RV on Monday morning. The former ESPN sportscaster was en route to Valencia when his wife dozed off at the will. I had just unbuckled my seatbelt. It was only unbuckled for five seconds. I noticed my wife had dozed off. So instead of going straight down the 14, we were headed toward the median. And I tried to grab the steering wheel, but before I could grab the steering wheel, we already had impact. The force of the impact ejected him through the driver's side window, propelling him over the divider onto the bustling 14 freeway in the New Hall area. Hurtling approximately 170 feet as the RV raced along at around 60 miles per hour, he landed amidst the traffic. All I'm thinking about, I'm going to get hit by a car. I'm on a freeway. I'm on one of the busiest freeways in LA County. So what's going through my mind is I'll be dead short. In the footage, a white SUV veers away to avoid collision with him. Good Samaritans like Alf Smithy stop to help. Cordo bears road rash over 60% of his body, along with multiple fractures and 17 stitches. His main realization? Astonishingly, Cordell's wife emerged unscathed from the ordeal. Their dog, a beagle, also survived the crash. However, the RV was utterly destroyed. Cordell muses that his RV adventures are likely at an end. In early 2008, a shadow fell over the life of 24-year-old Marilyn Bergeron. Unease settled upon her, prompting her to move back to her family's home in Quebec. Though the reasons remained unclear, her loved ones sensed a deep-seated trouble brewing beneath the surface. Conversations about potential issues, 
including addiction, were met with firm denials from Marilyn. Then, with unsettling abruptness, she vanished. The last confirmed sightings of Marilyn paint a picture of her final hours. On the morning of February 17th, she attempted to withdraw money from an ATM, her face captured by security cameras. The withdrawal failed, but the footage reveals an unsettling detail, Marilyn glancing over her shoulder repeatedly as if searching for someone. This chilling observation confirmed by police fueled speculation. Was she truly lost, mentally or physically, or was something more sinister at play? Later that day, Marilyn bought a coffee at a cafe, appearing downcast and eager to leave. This marked the last documented interaction with her. The only remaining clue was the unnerving ATM footage, a silent witness to her troubled state and possible fear. Silence and uncertainty shrouded the case for years until 2017. A glimmer of hope emerged when Jonathan Gunfire, a friend of Marilyn's, came forward with new information. He recounted a party they attended together shortly before her disappearance, describing a stark change in her demeanor. Gone was her usual cheerfulness, replaced by overwhelming anxiety. Returning to her apartment, her mood spiraled further, culminating in tears. Jonathan initially suspected trauma like sexual assault or witnessing a crime, but Marilyn vehemently denied both. Instead, she confided in him about something far more harrowing, something that, according to some, suggests her disappearance might not have been solely about escaping danger, but potentially about involvement in one. Here's a news clip about a man who encountered a potentially aggressive individual while driving to work. The man filming the incident remained calm and de-escalated the situation by not engaging with the other person. Come on. Move. Move. I got places to go. This unsettling body camera footage captures the instance when 23-year-old Chloe Jones was liberated following a harrowing ordeal of abduction, assault, and four days of captivity at the hands of William Manziengo in October 2023. Manziengo faces an array of charges encompassing kidnapping, abduction, assault, illegal confinement, and violation of parole. It was up to other reasons. Right, I got you. Do you know he's in there for a fact? I know for a fact. Uh -huh. The figure skulking in the shadows, cloaked in a hooded garment, is Michael Hillier, identified as both a drug dealer and an embittered partner. Rachel Fowl, his significant other, accused 38-year-old Liam Smith of sexually assaulting her for years prior following a tender rendezvous, sparking Hillier's wrath and a fevered desire for retribution against Smith. The video snippets depict his presence as he loitered near Liam's residence for a span of 10 hours. He remained stationed in his vehicle or concealed in the vicinity of the street, biding his time until Liam Smith emerged from his home. Hillier proceeded to fatally shoot Smith, then doused him with sulfuric acid under the pretense of executing vigilante justice. Both the 39-year-old Hillier and his partner Rachel were handed life sentences for the murder. 
Step into an unsettling enigma that will leave you chilled to the bone. A woman enters an elevator, an ordinary act that takes a chilling turn. Disoriented and uneasy, she leans against the door, her world tilting on its axis. As she stumbles out into the lobby, her hands clamp over her ears as if to block out an unseen terror. But the true horror unfolds when she's inexplicably pulled back into the open elevator, the door is eerily refusing to close. This hair-raising moment, captured on camera, will leave you with a lingering sense of unease, questioning the very fabric of reality. Adolph Robert Thornton Jr., known professionally as Young Dolph, made a significant impact on the music industry before his untimely death in 2021 at the age of 36. His career trajectory was marked by steady growth, with his debut album, King of Memphis, reaching the Billboard 200 charts top 50 in 2016. By 2020, he had released his fifth studio album, Rich Slave, which achieved his highest chart position yet at number five. Beyond his musical talent, Young Dolph was also an entrepreneur, founding his own independent label and forming a rap group. He remained deeply connected to his hometown of Memphis, frequently visiting and supporting local businesses. On November 17th, 2021, while visiting Makita's homemade butter cookies, a bakery he regularly patronized, he was tragically shot and killed by individuals in a white Mercedes Benz. CCTV footage captured young Dolph filling his car with gas at a nearby station shortly before his death. This seemingly ordinary act became his final recorded activity, adding a poignant layer to the tragedy. Four Americans abroad seeking assistance when intoxicated and causing disturbances presents limited options, none of which involve NATO. The individual in the Reddit video shared by Threefold appears oblivious to this fact. He repeatedly calls out for the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Let me talk to NATO. Where's NATO? NATO right now. Let me talk to NATO. Hey, let me talk to NATO. Right now. Let me talk to NATO. Wait, what is my rights? Is anyone going to talk to my rights? Speak rights. Sit down. I'm lame now. What are you talking about? Sit. I can't. I'm lame. Can you turn me? Where's my rights? Where's my shoe? Can I get my shoe? Can you put it on my foot? No, put it on my foot. Yeah, put it on my foot. If you want me to sit, put it on my foot. There's a right here. I'm a human being. I'm not getting on the I'm I feel naked. You guys are putting me in a car naked. Put my foot. Put my shoe on. His insistence on contacting NATO as evidenced by this repeated queries, such as, let me talk to NATO and where is NATO, suggest a lack of awareness. A Delta pilot in Denver recently filed a lawsuit after experiencing a malfunction on an airport moving walkway. The incident, captured on video, shows the pilot losing his balance and falling, with his shoe and sock becoming stuck in the machinery. This incident highlights the potential safety risk associated with moving walkways. While moving walkways are a popular and convenient way to navigate airports, their operation requires proper maintenance and adherence to safety guidelines. This incident raises questions about the specific walkway's conditions and whether it met necessary safety standards. Experts like Dennis Olson, a walkway specialist, emphasize the importance of regular inspections and maintenance to prevent accidents. Fortunate not to, not to be hurt worse. I don't totally understand how he didn't lose a toe or something worse than that. He advises passengers to be cautious when using moving walkways, particularly regarding loose clothing, footwear, and balance. Thanks for watching. Stay vigilant, friends.